all the famous big bands, the Lou Stones, Roy Fox, Ambrose, they'd all gone off round the country on tour. So that left a gap in the West End. And that was filled by a new generation of band leaders. For instance, a young West Indian called Ken Snakehips Johnson moved stealthily into the Café de Paris. And on that night in 1939, when they opened, sitting right in the middle, was a young guitarist, Joe Denise. Hello, Joe. Tell us about, why was he called Snakehips for a start? Um, he was called Snakehips because he was a, a dancer, really. He knew nothing really about music. Then how did he get a band? I mean, well, it was formed by uh, a chap called uh, Leslie Thompson, mm. trumpet player and cello player, very well-known musician at that time. Mm. He formed the band, mm -hmm. and I think, if I understand it, there was um, a little contretemps with them, and uh, he left mm. temporarily, but he rehearsed the band. So Johnson was just the icing on the cake? Yes, exactly. He, he was a dancer, really. And he knew nothing about music at all? Not at all. Not a note. Could I get up there and wave a stick like that and fool people? It's not as simple as it looks. No, it not I mean, uh, when you have arrangements, you have to uh, know when to stop, when to start, when to slow up and whatever. So somebody taught him that? Yes, exactly. He had to... Uh, uh, Leslie Thompson would conduct the band. Mm. And then Ken would s sit there, watch, and listen. And when the time came for, to, to conduct the band, he would wave the stick. It was more waving in the air and everything else, but we didn't really watch him. You didn't take it in, Not particularly. Mm. Um, just sort of uh, watched him waving the stick around. See. And um, he was very good at it. He learned very quickly. and continued with great success at the Café de Paris until the night of March the 8th, 1941. And that is not a night, I think, that you'll forget, Jack. I don't think I ever will. I thought about it for a long time afterwards, but now it's in the dim distant past and uh, I don't think of it too often now, hmm. except when I get the occasional twinge, which was caused by the bombing. I was injured, as you know. And uh, it was like an ordinary night. Usual time, we used to arrive and start around about 9.30 mm. because the floor show went on at 10. Mm. And um, sitting there nice and playing away, he came to a particular tune, Old Johnny, which I, incidentally, I refused to play for years yeah. afterwards because I always had a feeling about it. Mm. And uh, sitting there playing, 
It was the most god awful whoomph. Mm. I can't describe the sound of the bomb. It was just a, a whoomph, just like that. Mm. And everything went black. And uh, I tried to stand up. I thought I was uninjured. Next thing I know, I just fell down again. And I looked down, it's all a, a nasty mess where my leg was, or what had been. And uh, I was quite conscious, and uh, it was chaos. Screams and shouts and dust and dirt, you name it, it was all there. Next thing I remember is the, the drummer grabbing me under the armpits and dragging me off backwards, off the stand. And unfortunately, the stand had a very narrow stairway at the side. Mm. So I had to thump me down there and everything was falling me. The place was full? Yes. Oh, I, I, a lot of people hurt? Uh, yes, I, I, I think, if I remember, I was told there were about 80 people killed instantly. And there were a lot of people injured. A lot the of band? People. Uh, the band. Um, Ken was killed, of course. Mm. He was standing no more than about 10 feet away from me. And on the far side, which is about another 10 feet, was the saxophone player, David Williams, who used to call him Baba Williams. Mm. He was killed. There were three other sax players, unhurt. Two chaps behind me, unhurt. Chap next to me had the same injury as I had in my leg. The pianist who was right in the, right where the stand was, he was unhurt. The drummer was there, and he, they were in the front. Mm. And I think the only thing that stopped me from really getting, really having it badly was the fact that the piano was partly in front of me and shielded me, because I had my instrument case down in front of me, and that was peppered. The shrapnel, you see. However, um, I get us into the uh, cinema next door, the entrance of the cinema. I've got the name of the place. And uh, that was in complete darkness because uh, the bomb had actually come through the roof of the cinema onto the dance floor, went up, and just devastated the place. The whole place was complete devastation. <laughs> dropped, it seemed to herald the end of an era. It simply blew the heart out of the West End. After the war, some of the band leaders came back, but they didn't last for long. And soon those wonderful bands and the music they played were gone forever.